there was one kennel that had jawbones of another dog in it. And a lot of them had parts of their ears missing. They were so afraid. It was just sad. They were actually happy to see us. Almost like they knew we were there to save them. We got a call out of the blue from Jefferson County, a, a gal by the name of Kelly Daughtery, who is an assistant to the county attorney, Matt Johnson asked if we would be able to house some dogs. The minute I hung up the phone with, with Kelly, my wheels were turning. So I called my staff in at that point in time and I said, this is what I'm thinking. Gina said, we need to go get these dogs and we said, let's do it, and we did. We didn't even think twice about it. It, it was for the animals that needed to be saved. In October of 2011, uh, we assisted Lewis and Clark Humane Society and Jefferson County Sheriff's Office uh, in the removal of 161 Malamutes from Mike Chelinski's property. The drive up to the house was pretty horrifying. No one would ever have to see them. They wouldn't see the conditions they were living in. They wouldn't see, you know, how skinny they were, or malnourished, and he wasn't taking care of them. He was basically hidden, so no one would have to turn him in ever. You expect certain things when you, you first approach that many dogs. One is noise, and the other is movement and commotion. Probably could see 50, 75 dogs when we first walked on. Nobody was moving. The ones in the house, the moms and pups, were almost like his prized ones, so they were well kept. The farther away you got from the house, the worse the dogs got. And then you look out, and there was a dog over the hill, thrown over. Of all of the cases I've done in my career, certainly I think the largest percentage of underweight dogs was on this property. It was difficult just from a visual observation to discern how thin they were. Malamute's hair coats are so dense, so I don't think until we actually started to remove animals that became as apparent as it, as it was. And we're talking dogs that should be 80 pounds at a healthy normal weight, weighing 30. They could physically walk, but they didn't want to. They've never been on a leash, so they didn't understand what the leash meant. And for my size, to carry a Malamute by myself, difficult, but we all could pack every one of the dogs out of there. I think two-thirds of them was the final total, had parts of their ears missing, and a lot of them had active infected wounds on their face and scars on the muzzles and broken teeth. You know, evidence that they have been fighting and, and they weren't being cared for with some of these wounds, and I'm sure they were fighting over food. There was maybe three, four dogs in an enclosure, and you know, here was a dog that was the biggest, and it was still malnourished dramatically, but here's these three other little dogs, one of which was pregnant, and they need to eat to, to uh, grow the puppies and feed the puppies, and they couldn't get to the food bowl. So they probably slunk back in the corner and said, I guess I'll try again tomorrow, uh, if food comes tomorrow, and they didn't get it. Mentally and physically just exhausted. It was very, very emotional what we went through that day. It's just amazing, the dedication of, of these volunteers. I mean, they're still working as hard at 8 o'clock at night as they were 9, 10 in the morning. But then, you know, I had to come back the next morning and we just had to trudge on for these dogs. Initially, we had issues with ingestion of foreign objects that they had had access to in the pens and in kennels and our guesses because they had nothing else to consume. So pine cones, rocks, there were a lot of dogs that we had to take to surgery for removals of either obstructions or perforations with their bowels. Uterine infections and mammary tumors associated with the dogs that were left intact for breeding purposes. And then the orthopedic problems were pretty substantial. A lot of them had hip issues or knee issues that we can only account to 
a poor breeding program. We actually had 108 puppies born here, but 56 of those puppies died. My hardest part was losing them. And like I told my boss that I feel like I'm cleaning his mess and I don't like it. Well, in the beginning, we only hired three. Once we got the dogs and we realized how much work there was, three people just weren't gonna be enough. When we were at full staff, we had up to 15 people. Working with Lewis and Clark Humane Society has been a great opportunity for us. All of the time and all of the attention and effort that they have put into getting these dogs into the condition that they're in, keeping them sane while being housed for over a year, um, before they can be placed in homes has just been tremendous and, and I've been extremely impressed with their commitment to this case. People would get burned out because of the, the amount of work. It was a daunting task to keep people employed. There's no way one person could do this. Just for the health of the dogs, the mental health of the dogs, it's just amazing that one person thought that they could do all of this. They're terrified. You touch them and they just cringe and look at you and be like, what are you going to do to me? They just didn't know that human contact. Now you walk in and they just stand up and they start howling at you, talking to you, and give you kisses and love on you. Such an amazing change to see. Because we were afraid, are they going to come out of it? And they did. They're happy. It's been an amazing change. It's just been therapeutic for me. I can't believe I get paid to do this. I can't really come in contact with these dogs and not immediately want to form a bond with them. And uh, that's experience with these dogs. I don't know, I've just felt kind of a bond with him. From the beginning, I remember going into the kennel with him when we first got him, and it was even him being probably close to 30 pounds less, he was still a big boy. And it was quite intimidating, not sure how he was going to act. We didn't know how any of the dogs were going to act. So very cautious as we went in, and but he just turned out to be one of the nicest guys, just like the rest of them. All all great dogs and they just they just need a home just need a home now slowly they're getting into their homes we've had lots of adoptions we were fortunate enough to be able to to foster these guys and then eventually adopt i think these guys have it pretty good now i think about the dogs that are still there and that that breaks my heart, especially having taken in some emotionally damaged dogs. It's just hard to think that, that there's still dogs out there needing some homes. Knowing what I know now, would I do this again in a heartbeat? I would do it again in a heartbeat because this is about, because this is what our mission is, this is what I'm here for uh, and my staff is here for is to take care of the animals that need our help. And that's what we do. The thing that strikes me the most is what happened to the community. And by the community, I mean not only the people in Helena, but the people in Montana, and actually the people around the world. This hit, as we like to say, the Malamute wire. And the next thing you know, Malamute lovers from Japan, from England, from Ireland, from Nova Scotia, they started emailing us. They started sending money. They started saying, what can we do to help these dogs? Once it hit 
the press, it just went crazy. I would come in the morning and have 60 or 70 messages on the answering machine. People just wondering how they were doing, you know, how do I adopt them? The internet, our website, everything just kind of blew up. People around town were donating. We would get pallets of dog food, toys, Kongs. There were people in Helena who stepped forward with dog blankets, with dog bowls. We had all these people volunteer. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Department had people coming. We had people coming. Our Spay Montana people were there. There were horse trailers. I mean, people just came out of the woodwork to help with this effort. We had support from a lot of the Malamute clubs across the country. We had uh, several businesses in town do fundraisers for us. People from all over the world donated. They sent money, even if it was five or ten dollars, to assist. I mean, we, it was amazing the way the community and just the country opened up to these dogs.